Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And before we get to today's video, I just want to say a quick thanks to everybody as we head into one year of doing these. Um, a crazy COVID year for sure, but want to say thank you to everybody who has joined us and shared our videos and contributed. You've literally kept us going for the last year, so thank you. If you haven't yet contributed, thanks for considering it. All right, today we're going to talk about the Natural History Society of Maryland, and that's behind me. Um, we thought we would do that because as we head into the spring, people are starting to freak out about the hordes of cicadas that are going to descend on us. And we thought, who better, who would better know about these than the folks here at the Society? Um, and we'll get to that at the end. But the Society, if you haven't heard of them, um, it's not because they're new. They were founded on Maryland Day in 1929. Maryland Day is March 25th. And that's when, in 1633, um, when Europeans uh, landed on St. Clement's Island and began the journey of Maryland as a colony. Um, so they founded, the, but this group in 1929 broke away from the Maryland Academy of Science. Science, And if you haven't heard of that, um, that's the state's oldest scientific body, founded in 1797. Today we know it, know it as the Maryland Science Center. So 1929, um, this group breaks away. So what do they do? Well, the first thing they do is a, a bunch of experiments, including one by one, some by one of their founders, a gentleman, Gilbert Klingel, who was an early pioneer in studying life underwater and life underwater in the Chesapeake Bay. He used a device called a bentharium, which I think was like an early diving bell, um, a big steel tube with glass at one end that he would crawl inside and get to peer down at the bottom. Uh, take a look at what was going on down there. Um, pretty pioneering. Um, the second thing they did was find a home, and they found a home at the Maryland House in Druid Hill Park. That's now part of the zoo. Back then it was a natural history center that they operated from the 1930s to the 1970s. Some years as many as 50,000 people came. Maybe you were one of them. Um, another thing that they did uh, early on was allow women in. In 1935, um, they admitted the, uh, as members women. I think there were eight science teachers, uh, women science teachers, who were in that first group of women, and it's been men and women ever since. Um, and then just a few years later, in the 1940s, they started youth groups for boys and girls. And let me read to you a, uh, a few of the entries in 1948, a science fair, science competition in 1948. Here are three of the entries. They're pretty neat and pretty impressive. One is mammalian ecology of the Mount Hope area. Another is minerals of the Stony Run shaft. And one, certainly a forward young, forward looking uh, a boy or girl, uh, uh, did his or her project on the rocket in space travel. I'm clearly looking ahead there. Um, another thing that the society did was, uh, was start collecting, and they've got a number of pretty impressive collections. They have got the first bog turtle identified in Maryland, that's our endangered species um, from 1941. Um, they've got a collection of skeletons from voles, those little mouse-like creatures, um, but these are not just any voles, they were voles eaten by barn owls, and not just any barn owls, but barn owls living at the top of the castle of the Smith Smithsonian Institute from 1896 to 1906. So kind of neat there. They've got a collection of shells from the Garrett family of the B&O Railroad fame. And they have a collection of Florida tree snails by Dr. Howard Kelly, one of the big four doctors who founded Hopkins Hospital. He was an avid naturalist uh, and a member of the society. Um, but not all of their collections were just uh, sort of curiosities. They have a collection of eggs from osprey and bald eagles that in the 1960s scientists used as the baseline for what healthy eggs should look like before DDT. So a really important contribution there um, as well. Um, they also started journals. The society started a couple journals. Two of them are still going today. A journal of hepatology, um, which was actually where the first time the, let me get the name right, the Arizona Ridge-Nosed Rattlesnake, um, it was in that journal that it was first uh, identified scientifically. Um, and that was the first endangered species listed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, they also continue to publish the Maryland Naturalist, which is a peer-reviewed journal focusing on the uh, mid-Atlantic states. And it's a pretty impressive journal there as well. Well, 
let me wrap up with two things. One is this headquarters building behind me. I'm up here on Bel Air Road in the Overly neighborhood. And it was, it was uh, uh, built in 1910, and it was the Overly Town Hall. It served a number of functions. One function that it served in 1913 was it hosted uh, the Army of the Hudson. And the Army of the Hudson was a group of women who were marching from New York to Washington, uh, D.C., to demand the right to vote. They were suffragists. And in February, so they were probably pretty cold when they were marching, but in February they stopped here um, and they got a warm reception. They got uh, food and, and heat, probably, um, and also, for sure, moral support here uh, at the town hall. Uh, but today it is the headquarters uh, for the society. All right, let me wrap up with uh, back to our cicadas. Um, in fact, the, the folks here did talk about cicadas, but I missed it by a month. Um, they had a talk uh, by a well-known uh, uh, scientist, um, Dr. Mike Rupp, um, who is a frequent contributor, contributor on NPR. And he talked about our 17-year cicada cycle, um, and uh, including how to address them without using pesticides. Um, although we missed that talk, if you'd like to know more, uh, Dr. Rupp uh, has a website uh, called Bug of the Week, and we'll list the website up there. Um, and in past issues, he's talked a bunch about cicadas, so you can find out what's in store through that as well. All right, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.